all for joining us for the second episode of CITN Taxation and You. My name is OJ Samuel, the anchor for this program. In the first episode, we dealt with proactive funding of tertiary education for development, and tertiary education development in Nigeria, and we looked at the way forward, recommending practical solutions. In this second episode, we go forward to look at the challenges governing or dealing with the issue of tax compliance in Nigeria. So our title for today, for this second episode, is dealing with dealing specific words. Specific words, dealing with low tax compliance in Nigeria and the way forward. Dealing with low tax compliance in Nigeria and the way forward. And with me here in the studio is someone most, all members, all members of CITN are very familiar with. Anyone who has anything to do with taxation in Nigeria is very familiar with the person with me in the studio. His name is no person other than Barrister Samuel Olushola Agbeluyi. Barrister Olushola Agbeluyi, welcome to our program, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I'm going to go forward to give us more details before we move on. He's a, big, he's a very big masquerade in the house. So, by Stagbelli, who's a higher national diploma in accountancy from Yaba College of Technology. He also studied law at the University of Bradford in the United Kingdom and was called to the Nigerian Bar in 2012. He holds an MBA in marketing from the Enugu State University of Science and Technology and an MSc in finance from the Lagos State University. Samuel Oloshola Agbeluyi is a multidisciplinary professional of repute who has made his modest contributions both in employment and practice. He is one professional who could be described as an all-rounder considering the unique combination of professions that he belongs. Also being a lawyer, he is a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, CITN, a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and a fellow of the Chartered Institute of Stockbroker, CIS. His own career has taken him through several private institutions, including Reels Group of Companies, Jagao Group, Harmony Securities Limited, among others. He is a member of Ikeja District of CITN, ICANN, and NBA. He is also a member of the International Bar Association. He has offered himself for service, for service in various capacities and at different times to professional institute and association. There are so many more things to read about our guests for today. Um, we're going to take a whole lot of time, um, you know, a whole lot of time dealing with that. Here with me is Barrister Olu Sholasamalagbelui, and most importantly, audience, is the Vice President of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria. Welcome once again, our Vice President. So my, let me give my, you a formal title. <laughs> yes, my, my pleasure, uh, sir. Thank you, sir. My Vice President, we are dealing with, um, you know, low tax compliance in Nigeria. I want to look at the way forward. So the title is Dealing with Low Tax Compliance in Nigeria and the Way Forward. I want to start, my Vice President, what is low tax compliance? What will you say be for the layman, for the ordinary people who are not tax professionals, to come to understand. Uh, okay, thank you, Sam, once again. Uh, I will start with uh, what is uh, tax compliance. And uh, tax compliance is uh, uh, obeying the law, specifically obeying tax law. And uh, this has its root in our constitution. The constitution, 1999 uh, constitution as amended, uh, enjoyed us to declare and pay our tax to uh, uh, recognize uh, agency honestly. So doing that, complying with the law uh, and the grand norm, the constitution, uh, means task compliance. And if everybody is co uh, uh, complying to the law, then there will be no issue of uh, low task compliance. So the contrary, the absence of uh, compliance to the law as uh, stated in federal status, leads to low compliance. And that is what we are battling with in Nigeria. Okay, wow. Well, well, this is so broad. Meaning, any failure to comply with the law with respect to taxation is um, lack of tax compliance. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, that is a huge net you've opened up. Exactly. Uh, opened up. Um, so, my advice is I go to the second question that I want to know. 
when can a tax compliance level in a country like Nigeria be said to be low? Uh, okay. Uh, you agree with me that uh, no country or no man is an island. Uh, we, are in, uh, we are a nation in the midst of a committee of nations. So there's always a benchmark. Even as a country, uh, there's always a benchmark for whatever you do. That's what we call industry average. What you expect in the ICT sector is not what you expect in the uh, entertainment sector. So uh, back to tourism and the uh, compliance level, which are we look at from the task to GDP ratio. The worldwide uh, uh, benchmark, anything under 15% is considered low. And even in uh, Africa, there are a lot of countries that are doing far better than 15% uh, uh, contribution to GDP. Now, in Nigeria, the last time we checked, we are still battling to get to 70%. So if the average is uh, 15%, or the expected minimum is uh, 15%, and you are battling with uh, 70%, which is sometimes uh, something slightly below 50% of what you are expected to do, then, of course, that should be considered low. Okay, so based on the tax to GDP ratio, exactly. we can um, reasonably state, yes. based on that statistics, yes. that we are having a low tax compliance in Nigeria when compared to other um, countries exactly. in the African region. Thank you so much, my um, um, Vice um, President. We are still going to come to the issue of that um, ratio. In reality, it doesn't really reflect where we are, but that is going to be another issue for discussion as we move on. Okay. Um, what we want to know, uh, what do you think? What do you think are the causes of low tax compliance in Nigeria? Our Nigerian experience, right? What do you think are the reasons for low tax compliance? There are a myriad of reasons. Uh, maybe you look at from the government and even from the tax uh, payer. If I will start from uh, the tax payer, who are the king in this instance, the uh, main concern, as I know it, is a lack of uh, transparency, judicious use of uh, tax revenue. That is key. Whoever wants to give you money for you to manage on behalf of everybody, uh, there is a uh, definition of tax that I like, which is uh, uh, tax is uh, what, what you pay to live in a civilized environment. If I'm paying you uh, S amount of money to live in a civilized environment, then you should, the obligation is on you to make me to live in civilized environment. So the moment I'm not getting the corresponding benefit of what I'm supposed, to, uh, what I'm paying, then I start developing COVID. So that is the major reason on, on, part, on, on the part of uh, uh, the, the taxpayer. Now, if I must go to the government, you know, <laughs> CIT has done a lot of work in this country, and I'm proud of what we have done. Uh, specifically around maybe 2013, 2014, the team of our uh, ATC was uh, making tax revenue. Uh, our tax revenue is a sustainable uh, way of uh, financing government uh, revenue. Now, if that is the case, how come that uh, government was focusing on oil revenue? And we shouted and we made all the noise, we did all the advocacy. That was about 10 years ago. Over 10 years ago. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you on a good authority that we've been making, we saw this ahead of uh, time, that you can't be uh, having a monoproduct economy. It's not sustainable. We said it then. But it was, the, 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 the people at the end of Africa never listened to us. But the reality is done on us here today. So when you focus on oil revenue, that is widely considered in our environment as no man's uh, money. Then your attempt, effort at uh, judicial use may not be at optimum. Now, the way you utilize tax revenue is not going to be the way you utilize uh, uh, natural endowment uh, revenue. So, when people pay, they want to see you making use of the money appropriately. And what that is done, then you encourage others to join the, 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 the trade. So it is a major concern to taxpayer stakeholders when the money that is 
put in the hand of government is not properly used. That's in another reason for uh, low stars to GDP, uh, GDP uh, ratio in this part of the world. The focus of government was not on tax. And of course, Possibly the government was also too comfortable with low hanging tree. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's so, 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 yes. yes. so, uh, so it's not it's, it's not a surprise that uh, where the revenue from oil started drying up, they were comfortable with the debt finance. And of course, debt finance has its a, a, a consequence, and the consequence is what we are facing today. I personally was in the National Assembly about four years ago. Okay. Arguing against debt finance. That in the implication of the consequence as cut of it. So, but those are the part of the reasons why we have a low tax revenue to GDP. Wow, well, okay. So, that the taxpayer responsibility part of it and uh, the governance of government part of it of all course, affecting of course, all of it. Of it is due to okay. uh, the taxpayer the uh, obligation to comply. And pay what is required of them. A typical scenario is if you are a taxpayer, you are supposed to pay 100, please pay 100, don't pay 90, or don't pay 60. And if you are a revenue agency, you are supposed to collect 100, don't collect 110, don't collect 120, 100 for 100. Once that is done, that is the first stage. Then the money is in the hand of government. Please kindly utilize this money for the purpose of uh, the interest of uh, the taxpayers. Okay, thank you, my vice president, for that clarity, giving that two-winged approach that is all, you know, that um, encompass all of the various sub-courses of voters' compliance. Um, someone wants to say, uh, do you think the arguments by taxpayers on why they should not comply with all the tax payments? Somebody says, see, you know, do you think the arguments that support why taxpayers will decide or to cherry pick for every human topical issue, there will always be argument for or against. Okay. Uh, so there will always be argument. Now the question, the proper question is how sustainable or how how good or how sound is that argument? I, I think as a people, we need to sit down and make up our mind if we want to live in a civilized environment or not, if we want Nigeria to develop or not. Now I agree because I also live in this country that the leaders have not done well in terms of uh, utilization of revenue. Nigeria should not be where we are today. I agree. But the question is, should you decide not to pay your obligation, that's obligation to government? Who is going to do it? If I decide to pay and you decide to, if I decide not to pay and you decide not to pay, everybody decides not to pay, who is going to pay? And if you all decide not to pay, where is government to get, going to get the revenue? So in the case of chicken and egg, egg, which one comes first? Who blinks first? Okay. And I suggest strongly for that matter that the taxpayer, the citizens should blink first. It gives you a moral right, legal background, legal stand to take the government up and say what we are paid, the amount that is in the hand of government over this number of period, what has been the utilization. But for that, individual who has not made payment, what, is, or, or, or what will be the justification to take the government uh, uh, up to account for what? The money you have not given to them? Or should we decide and say, okay, we are not going to pay until we see your genuineness or we see your seriousness. So go and borrow money and finance all the infrastructural uh, uh, needs of the country. When we see that, then we start making payment. The question is that we know for debt finance, there is the uh, uh, byproduct of uh, interest payment. So to finance 100 billion project, if you go and borrow, then it is you are paying back with 100 billion plus X. Okay, which is the interest so accrued. So it is costlier okay. to finance government project when you talk of public finance. To finance government project, it is better and more sustainable to use tax revenue. Once this is done, of course, there will be development. Once there is development, then there will be uh, prosperity in the country. Everybody is work, working towards uh, prosperity. So I know the argument, but I tell you, that is not the way to go. We need to do what we need to do. And for Nigerians, 
it is uh, another weak side of the argument is that when we get out of the country, every penny we are asked to pay, we make that payment. So we can't come back to Nigeria and deny our fatherland the needed revenue that will be required to, to finance our activities. So there's argument, but uh, we shouldn't sustain that argument. Uh, my baby, uh, yeah, your clarity is so um, is glaring for all to see. But uh, maybe, uh, do you think that argument also speaks to the issue of a uh, multiplicity of taxes? People are just, you know what, pay this, pay this, pay this, pay this. Come, I'm not paying this, I'm not paying this, okay, I can pay this. But do you think there's a need? Yes, it may be wrong, but do you think there's an underlying reason why government want to look at its portfolio of taxes, whether formally called taxes or as levy, licenses, um, renewal, stuff here and there? I, uh, you know, that argument is a contentious one. If you ask the government, is there, uh, do we actually have multiplicity of taxes, depending on who is ask, uh, answering the question? Some people will say we don't have. But let me see this from this uh, perspective. Uh, you can collect more because tax is law. And law thrives on certainty. So for tax to improve or tax generation to improve, internally generated revenue to improve, there must be certainty around the uh, uh, tax law and tax administration. Uh, i give you an example. How many taxes do we pay to FRS? That's Lagos State No, FRS. Okay, Federal Federal Revenue Service. Okay. How many do we pay to the federal state internal revenue services. If you are a company operating in, say for, for example, Enugu State, how many form of tax or tax type are you supposed to pay as a company? Your major business has to do with the federal internal revenue service. So it is only the staff in your organization that has the obligation to pay their payee. Okay. And at best, they, do their, they pay their development uh, levy. But the Federal Inland Revenue has the responsibility to collect the likes of uh, company contacts, the VAT, and the likes. So looking at it from that perspective, government may argue that there is no multiplicity of taxes. But you can't stop at that. Because you wears the shoe, know where it pinches. And the government, if I must say this, has not helped matter with the various airmark taxes they have brought about okay. in recent times. Police levy, uh, uh, network or uh, uh, telecom uh, taxes okay. and the like. Yes, yes, and so uh, that has not helped our matter. I will say for whoever does not want to pay or somebody wants to sit on the, on, on, on the fence, it's a good argument to say, no, I don't even know which, 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 which one to pick. And just still talking about certainty of uh, tax law, the frequency, particularly in the four, past four years, that uh, the National Assembly has introduced one levy or the other, which is in form of tax, is not too encouraging. So in the real sense of it, as a, as, as a practitioner in the system, I can say there's multiplicity of taxes, and it doesn't help, any, uh, uh, it doesn't help the system. If I must recommend, we need to do more of codification, okay. alignment of our uh, furious task law, so that uh, it, what we want to get is revenue. And you can always project, I need X amount of money for the, net, for the developmental program in the next five years, in the next 10 years, as the case may be. How much do I need to finance this? You don't need to start looking at test funds, police funds, uh, health, health, health funds, and by doing that, we are not helping the system. Let us not forget the basic canons of law, of a task, as uh, uh, given to us by Adam Smith. Uh, there must be simplicity and economy of uh, uh, task collection. Okay. The more of this you have, the more of cost that, is, that goes with it. And that is not going to uh, engender confidence uh, of the taxpayer in a tax payment. So I recommend fewer taxes and more efficiency in the system. 
Well, thank you so much, sir. You've um, helped us um, clarify that um, very elaborately. Um, the next question to consider, Mr. President, is um, the issue about um, the recent finance acts. You know, we have the 2019 finance act, we have the 2020 finance act, we have the 2021. Um, the always issues identify amendment from this finance act. Are there attempts through the finance act to try to um, obtain the low tax compliance culture in Nigeria? Are there provisions? Are there encouragements here and there in the series of finance act so far? There is an aim that um, upscaling tax compliance in Nigeria. There are there are various uh, uh, steps, attempts that even we want to classify as uh, boot steps. Uh, you see, it is not enough to criticize the government when they are not doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. When they do the right thing, please applaud them. Okay. Now we'll be talking as an institute. We've been making contribution to government o over the years that you don't come year in, year out with budget uh, 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 for the uh, country without detailed explanation, roadmap of how you intend to finance or fund the uh, uh, budget. And uh, uh, it was pleasant surprise in 2019 when the Minister of Finance came up with uh, the Finance Act of uh, 2019 to address those things. Basically, you agree with me that we have a lot of uh, uh, archaic uh, uh, tax law in the country. A typical example is the uh, Stamp Duty Act. So you can't have archaic law dealing with dynamic uh, issues. Taxation is dynamic. The environment is changing, the economic landscape is changing, and your law is static. There is a, there is a, there, there is a disconnect. So when the, when the federal government came with the Finance Act, specifically in 2019, it has helped the system greatly. I, I give you an example. It was true Finance Act that the VAT rate was increased from 5% to 7.5%. Okay. That's a major, uh, that's a major uh, uh, step. If the government had wanted to amend the VAT uh, Act, possibly it would have been more cumbersome. But by the fact, by fact of the instrumentality of uh, the Finance Act, that was done, and I tell you, it's a brilliant uh, step. Again, it is not about increase in uh, tax uh, revenue or tax rate. Okay. I tell you, it is important Sometimes giving out things could lead to increase. It was through the instrumentality of uh, uh, Finance Act that uh, the exemption of those people collecting 30,000 per month was done. So uh, just like some people, we jokingly say that uh, you don't touch poverty. Uh, what, <laughs> okay, what, are, well, why, why are you, why, what, why, why are you expecting somebody who's collecting uh, 30,000 per month to pay? Uh, can you look at the top echelon of the economy, the high network in, in, individual to pay? So it was through the uh, Finance Act that that was done. The, the, another one that has contributed very well was the adjustment of the minimum tax uh, rate. Uh, pa personally, I don't believe in the uh, minimum tax. And as an institute, we don't believe in the minimum tax because minimum tax uh, is a uh, capital erosion. But we made this argument, and the government said no. We know it could be capital erosion. But there is a moral obligation for anybody who is living within the system to at least contribute into the pool so that you have a sense of belonging. That is what makes you a stakeholder within the system. So we are not going to say pay 5% uh, or 0.5%. Uh, uh, we are going to reduce. That was done through the instrumentality of uh, uh, Finance, Finance Act. Act. Now, that speaks to something. The moment you relate and you try to solve people's problem, you get their buying in whatever you are doing. And if you ask the task administrator, they will tell you uh, voluntary compliance to tax law and payment is far better than uh, enforcement because enforcement has its cost. Okay. So cost when, of uh, yes. So okay. when the government from time to time takes steps to look at the pains 
within the system and they address it is good for the system is a step that must be uh, 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 encouraged. So there has been various uh, benefit arising from uh, the uh, tax uh, law. Say if, you are, if your business is under 25 million, you are exempted from uh, company contacts and uh, fee This has specifically addressed the challenges of the small and medium sized uh, company. So for people in that sector, for the people within that range, it speaks to the fact that, okay, the government wants me to grow. Okay. The moment my business okay. grows beyond 25 million in turnover. in turnover, then of course I will visit the uh, revenue uh, agency to do what is uh, uh, right. But when I'm still under 25 million, then I'm accepted. It shows that the, 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 the government knows and appreciates what uh, the, the people in business are going through. And I tell you, all things be equal. And I emphasize all things be equal. That for a genuine person who has gone through this, possibly you have not paid anything because your turnover is under 25 million for the past three years. And possibly in 2022, uh, everything was well. And you go beyond 25 million. I expect a genuine and law abiding uh, taxpayer to approach the agency and say, okay, when it was bad, you were there for me. Now that I, I'm enjoying prosperity, I need to also be there for you. This kind of attitude, this kind of uh, treatment engenders confidence in the system and the uh, people, it can only lead to one way, and that is improve uh, tax uh, revenue. This has been some of the uh, benefit the government has gotten by the introduction of uh, Finance Act that we definitely see the country getting more uh, revenue from taxation. Okay, wow, a whole lot, a whole lot. A whole lot of the finance and, um, um, A whole lot, because I'm um, exempting certain businesses with an annual turnover of 25 million, um, you know, um, and below from paying communication tax, um, tertiary education tax, is a whole lot of relief. At least they can now concentrate on other kind of um, taxes. Exactly. As the case may be. Exactly. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, that, that, that's a bold one. Like, so we should commend the government, we should commend when the government. they make positive um, steps, exactly. and not only exactly. trying to <laughs> not, give not, them not, not, not just to be, <laughs> not just to be full-time critic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that is so clear. So we've got the next um, issue to consider. Um, now, we're saying, what are other steps? You've um, spoken to the side of the Finance Act. What are other steps that are taken by the government at all levels towards um, improving compliance further? Apart from what we've done, or what government has done with the finance act, what are other steps? Uh, yeah, I, won't, I won't be tired of repeating myself. <laughs> you, 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 you can't get the buying of the populace, of the taxpayer, without tax justice. Proper, transparent, accountable way of using tax revenue, we do a lot. Nigerians are pretty simple, straightforward people. They want to do the right thing. But from the government side, are you doing the right thing? Are we seeing that you are doing the right thing? Uh, we, with due respect, some of our leaders live like emperor. And that does not speak to the sanity of the taxpayer, who is struggling every day to make sure that he creates something out of nothing to bring about business and to sustain the business. And it's giving you part of that uh, 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 revenue is getting. So it builds on you morally to identify with him by toning down some of your lifestyle. Okay. okay. By removing corruption from uh, 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 the system. Once this is done, and people can see value for the money they have uh, 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 put in the hand of government, I tell you they will do more. That is one. Second, the tax system, there are a lot of people who are still outside of the tax net. There needs to be a lot of enumeration. And you can't do enumeration uh, by manual system. Here, we have the issue of uh, ICT. Okay, uh, ICT. Technology playing a major role. And I tell you, the fastest way the government started some years ago, that they need to do more, it's like they have abandoned it, is the cashless economy. 
Okay, because at the time we had a cashless policy. Yes, the central bank started with Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt, and the, thereafter they moved to other parts of the country. You can't handle this level of uh, uh, cash in cash. your hand if you pay uh, S amount that is above the minimum or the maximum rather, then you are charged. The charging you is to uh, uh, serve as a deterrent okay. for you not to handle uh, cash. Now, the moment, and this is worldwide practice, it's not just uh, restricted to Nigeria. Uh, the economy, the activities, human endeavor is moving from carrying cash from one place to the other. So, but it has its tax benefit, particularly to the tax administrator. The moment everybody is in the banking net, then tax collection becomes easy. CBA has done something that is good, but they need to do more. The issue of BVN. So all your activities we know, we have, and as a result, we can trace. So that we, at the end of the day, help tax collection, tax administration. And again, still talking in lines of uh, technology, ICT, we need to do more in the area of uh, data collections, we can't have FRS collecting data, road safety collecting data, NIA collecting data, and everything is, is in silos. Okay. You need to, to synchronize and put everything together so that it can be of use to government for various uh, purposes. Security, tax revenue, planning, and the likes. So the government needs to do a lot in this direction so that uh, there will be maximum uh, benefit to the economy. Thank you so much. I just spoke on um, from the aspect of tax justice, which we emphasize trying to prohibit living like an emperor, identifying with the people, exactly. with the reality of the economic circumstances, exactly. and also trying to deploy ICT to, you know, to um, cover up more of the basis exactly. um, and then driving all um, other income. Um, we've um, spent a um, few minutes past some um, 30 minutes into the program and want to open up um, our lines, our lines for those of our members who are on Zoom. Um, if there are um, questions, contributions from members of the audience, um, this is the time to take um, your questions, contributions in this regard. I still have a couple of questions for our vice president. He's going nowhere. <laughs> He's there with me here. So we have a series of questions left. But let's get questions, contribution, input so far um, as we move ahead. Uh, we can hear a certain um, Steve in Debbie. Please, if you have a question to ask or contributions to make or um, observations you want to share with us, you may use the palm icon, the palm icon that pops out and um, the notice so that we can call on you. So we can see... Mr. Steven DBA, um, pardon us if we are not calling your title, whether it's Mr. Steven Doctor, Chief, and like. So, Mr. Steven DBA, you have um, one minute, one minute, please, strictly one minute to make your contribution or ask your question. Thank you very much. Mr. Steven DBA, are you there? Okay, let's go over to Mr. Samson Ajibade. Uh, Mr. Samson Ajibade. Mr. Sena Jibade, you may unmute um, to ask, ask a question, make your contributions, or share your observations. You have one minute. Mr. Uh, Sam Jibade. Thank you, sir. Uh, my name is Sam Jibade. Uh, I want to ask, for somebody that is just starting a new business, uh, like entrepreneurship or enterprise, uh, that, need, that need the pain, I also applied to them, but the thing is not forthcoming. What can he do for him to get the B? And he also asked that he had to register for fat registration. So is it necessary to register for fat registration for consulting uh, firm, like doing taxation, filing of tax return and the rest? I just want you to educate on, on that. And uh, why does it also take long to get B? Uh, the, the tax identification number. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, uh, my VP, let's, we're going to come back to the members of the audience. Uh, Mr. Jibari is asking, for someone starting out a new business, an enterprise, um, you know, how do, they, how do they register to get their VAT ID? Um, is there anything like that he would need to know? And also, maybe about the NIN thing. Well, even though that is not within our day, what delays the NIN? 
the national identification number. But let's look to the VATS or if you want to expand, how can they get registered for taxation purposes? I think that will elaborate. That will address this question. Uh, okay, uh, for me and from my experience, that is uh, uh, pretty simple now. Uh, just approach uh, the FRS close to you and uh, submit your necessary document. You are supposed to do this within the, six month, the first six months of your uh, registration or commencement okay. of business, whichever comes uh, early. Now, approach uh, FRS and submit the necessary document. I'm aware that uh, your incorporation document is one of the need things you need to take to uh, FRS for that registration. But that actually speaks to the company that have been registered for quite some time now. Okay. Uh, there has been synergy between Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, and uh, FRS, whereby upon registration, as you are getting your uh, uh, certificate of incorporation or certificate of registration, as the case may be, you get your thing. So you don't need to uh, 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 go anywhere to do that. Okay, so yeah. currently, as well yes. as, as you are registering, okay. you get you, you get, get your you, you get a application number. number. Okay. So all you just need to do for uh, for further you take further step, go and register for VAT and the likes. And should you have any problem, the FRS I know of today is far better than the FRS of old. A lot of things are changing. Okay. The, the system is becoming simpler and the environment is becoming friendlier. I go there occasionally and I can say this, I can, I can, I can say this by virtue of my experience. But it won't happen overnight. Should you get to any office whereby you are not getting the necessary response, then you escalate the issue. And I've seen, and rightly so, the higher you go in the hierarchy of officers in the uh, FRS office, the more of a humane uh, reception you get. Especially so, the higher you go, the more knowledge you should have, the more appreciation of the taxpayer, who is the king you should have and know. So should there be any, anything you are not get, getting through, always scale, scale, scale up. Uh, uh, of course, uh, CITN is not uh, a revenue uh, collection agent. We are a professional institute, but we are there for the taxpayer uh, the, the, the government to, to do the kind of advocacy we are doing in the interest of the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Let's go to Mr. Charles Carlo. Mr. Charles Carlo, if you are there, uh, are you there? You may want to um, share with us. Yeah, Mr. Charles Carlo. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, and uh, good morning to all personal colleagues uh, listening. Uh, I'm so excited with uh, this uh, uh, enlightenment that is coming up and that they have been longer overdue because um, we need it both for the people in authority and also for our practitioners. My uh, question to you, sir, is uh, we know that the problem we have, we have the, the usage of uh, taxation in Nigeria it does not only start with the federal government. How can the institute also take this message to the look to the state government at the state level? Because we have all the inland revenues in all the states of the Pacific of the Federation. And we also have our members or district societies across the nation. Because we need this collaboration because the decay in the system is horrible that we must speak to it so as to get a, a decent society for our own children. Not only really for us, but for our own children. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Charles Carlo is speaking the question of collaboration. That, that it seems that since some of clarity at the FRS level. Now, to the state level, that this is some of taxes. You know, what can be done to ensure that they advance the cost of compliance as and probably the federal level is doing? That is the word because trying to emphasize the need for that. At the the, state the, level. Uh, uh, increase the compliance level as uh, state level, as state level. Yes, sir. Well, it's as uh, important as life and death. Uh, you do it, you swim. You don't do it, you sink. How many, how much is FAC given to the state? Okay. Or the the allocation from, yeah. uh, uh, from the federal uh, government is dwindling. So you can only thrive and uh, succeed with your internally generated revenue. And you are not going to get that by wish. There is a process, and this is what CITN speaks to. Uh, CITN is a knowledge-based uh, institute. 
we, from time to time, embark, engage in training and retraining. Because just like I said at the uh, beginning of this program, taxation is life and it's dynamic. And it's even assuming a more international level than ever before at a very fast rate. There are a lot of aspects. If you are a company in Nigeria and uh, you have a leg or an aspect of activities outside of the country, it has implications. If you are an individual with uh, various uh, jurisdictions where you live or you work, it has implications. So, and this, you don't just assume the knowledge. What you don't know, you can't give. So the institute is always there to, for training and retraining, advocacy. And I tell you from my perspective, because I should know a little bit about what is going on in the system, a lot of state government are doing very well. I'll give you an example. I was in uh, Makodi about two weeks ago, and I met with the uh, fantastic woman there, uh, who is the chairman of uh, the State uh, Board of Internal Revenue. There has been massive improvement Okay. In, 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 in tax collection in Benue State. And this is not by mere wish. It just, it, what did she do? She just introduced technology. Okay, speaking the technology yes. again. Yes, and you, you, you did, so everything just work for the system. So using technology, using advocacy, and it is also good for tax administrators to cultivate their tax payer. Cultivate. Cultivate your okay. taxpayer. Make him your friend. Be interested in his, in his business. S make suggestions. Just like we have the account officer in Ferrius Bank. Okay. They are interested in your business. Because once you are in business, you are going to uh, 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 relate with him tomorrow. He needs your deposit. He wants you to collect loans so that, that you can pay interest, so that you can be in business. So it is not different from uh, the revenue authorities. You must also show empathy. Relate with these people so that the cash flow may not uh, 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 be okay to make certain obligations. The obligation is there, right? We are not disputing that. But you must also know that there is a difference between uh, profitability and liquidity. A company may be profitable, but there may be no liquid to, to, to sort out the obligations. Can you work out arrangement to make this payment? That I know is happening pretty well at FRS. It should also happen at the state level. We are by okay, you have conducted audit and the outcome are, is this. Now, the outcome is 10 million, for example. And the company cannot even pay 5 million out of its cash flow, otherwise everything will come down. We know this is the reality of business. Can you enter into an agreement and say, okay, make instrumental payment over the, over the month, empathize with the taxpayer, know his problem, cultivate him. The moment you have that kind of relationship, of course, you don't need to uh, uh, follow him after some time. He will do what is right. I will rather advocate that. And also, still talking about the federal state uh, internal revenue services, I've seen a lot of improvement. The, uh, if I must say this, uh, Federal Capital Territory Internal Revenue Service is doing a lot. There are a lot of trainings going on in uh, FCT IRS. And the possible and certain outcome of that is increase in revenue. Once you train your staff and you remunerate them properly, of course, they'll be motivated to do the right thing. And once they do the right thing, the natural consequence is increasing uh, uh, your revenue. And that is happening by federal. It may not be happening at the same rate across the country, but it's happening. Because the records are there with a uh, uh, Bureau of uh, Statist Statistics, and the records are also there with uh, JTB for okay, you to verify that okay. uh, there is improvement at the state level. But uh, we are just starting. We, we, can do, we can do far better than we are doing now. Okay, so thank you, sir, Mr. Vice President. So let's go to uh, Mr. Um, Ashir Adam. Mr. Ashir Adam, you have one minute, please. Um, if your question has been asked, you may skip. Uh, Mr. Bashir Adam, over to you. Bashir Adam. Okay. Good morning to all. Uh, my question is that why is it under the I learned that under the loss relief under the loss, the current year loss relief is only applied to individual, unlike 
carry poor loss leaf. So my question is that why is it current year loss leaf is not applied to both individual and corporate organization? Thank you. Okay, 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 Mr. Okay, it seems to me that you are studying taxation or something. That's a good question. About current year loss leaf, maybe let's just explain generally. I have a business. I'm an individual. I have made a loss. How is it treated? Is that loss taxed? Is it carried forward? Or do we forget about it? What does the law say, sir? Uh, well, it's I think it's talking about individual. Individual, okay. Uh, well, the, the, the personal income tax of individual is, uh, is determined by law. And uh, possibly it's talking about its enterprise. Enterprise has no uh, separate entity. So, but what an individual who works in an enterprise get first it's not the profit it's the income income okay okay so and your income if it's by way of salary is deducted it starts using the payee okay if it's a partnership the aggregate of the income if income arises of course is distributed amongst the partners then of course subjected to additional tasks when you are filing your returns. So that is clear. It is, uh, 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 loss relief is not that complex with individual, but possibly with a company. So loss relief, uh, for any individual, uh, you have to do whatever is your income under your, what do you call it now, direct assessment. Okay, okay. Uh, you okay. pay as you earn, if you are, uh, uh, as you earn, uh, as your income comes, you pay regularly at the end of the year when you are declaring your when you are filing your returns whatever is coming from other sources you aggregate of course nobody is going to tax a uh, loss okay okay thank you sir let's go to dr um omar holland dr omar holland if you are there um can you unmute and speak one minute please dr omar holland thank you doctor are you there are you hearing me yeah, okay, I am. Um, okay, you you. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for your educative, uh, uh, wonderful programs. Uh, uh, the chap, uh, the president, uh, the vice, rather. You made mention of uh, advocacy. Now, if you look in the past, uh, recent time, the uh, federal government had different which you, you spoke about levy taxes raising taxes what is the institute i know you'll be talking doing to let the federal government know the consequences of these taxes then two the police somewhere due they deducted almost across board they said they increased their taxes about two, three, four thousand across board. It did a month following, they remove it. I think this month again, my wife told me, several persons told me, they deducted another. So, what are we doing to see that federal government listening to us? In economy, price system is very, very key, it's very important. And this taxation, price system, you are high prices of commodity. You are increasing taxes. Uh, I think it's a very big problem. So what are we doing? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I think Dr. Doctor's question is speaking to advocacy, which you have spoken about. Is that just one or two things you want to say on that? Okay, uh, Doctor, thank you very much. How is Bini today and our people over there? Now, uh, uh, answering your question, I uh, tax is law and there is certainty. And I'm not aware of any amendment to the Personal Income Tax Act. So if there is a variation to your month after month uh, 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 tax uh, deduction, then you may need, it may be an internal issue that uh, you need to see those who are in charge of your payroll. Possibly, if I can assert a guess, possibly the writing has not been deducted before and they just discover that uh, they need to uh, do the writing. It's a possibility. There could be under deduction, there could be over deduction, but there has been no changes or amendment to the uh, uh, personal income tax uh, for 2022, as I know. And if there is no change, it's not about discretion. And that is one good thing about uh, tariffs. You don't use discretion, you follow the law. 
And if the law has not been uh, amended, then there should be certainty uh, in what is deducted. Thank you, Samadha. Thank you so much for that clarity. Um, we'll go to Mr. Gabriel Olushesi. Mr. Gabriel, um, uh, if, uh, if you are there, you may unmute and um, speak. Thank you. You may speak, sir. You've been unmuted. Um, Mr. Gabriel, we can't hear you. You may want to check out your your audio from your from your end, from your end. Okay. Okay. Please um, retry again. Let's go over to Dr. Godsiniro. Um, let's go over to Dr. Godsiniro. Dr. Godsiniro, are you there? Hello. Okay. Yeah, we can hear Hello. you, Dr. Hero. Yeah, good day, sir. We can hear you. Dr. Hero, can yeah, you hear um, you? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, uh, Vice President. Sir. Um, uh, my worry is, uh, you know, this issue of uh, um, bringing everyone to the tax into the tax net instead of uh, overtaxing those who are already there. You know, what, what is there anything? Probably, uh, uh, the our institute should do to encourage the government or even advise the government to lay more emphasis on bringing all taxable uh, ad, ad, adults into the tax net instead of either increasing the uh, uh, tax rates or even uh, 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 you know, uh, pursuing those who are already in the tax net, you know, of, uh, to the extent that many of them, uh, you know, pay even more than they ought to have paid, to the extent that uh, um, um, the, you see, when some people, some people are not into the net, and maybe those who are into the net are all the time being subjected to one tax or the other. Mm -hmm. Those outside the net are laughing at them. And laughing at them, uh, you know. So is it not better that we bring everybody into the tax net so that it becomes a culture? A culture in the country that people want to always pay. You know, when you see your, the, your neighbor is not paying tax, the neighbor should be ashamed that he's not paying tax. When it becomes a, a culture. Okay. So uh, this, okay. this area should be Thank you. Okay, Doctor, your point is noted. Uh, my vice president is like Doctor Doctor is speaking about him. Um, don't kill the wheel horse or something. <laughs> and the tax net. Do you, I, I, what do you think? I, I agree with him. We shouldn't kill down. the uh, uh, wheeling horse. Uh, all eligible uh, tax payers should be brought in the tax net. We still have a lot of people outside of the tax net. Uh, depending on which figure you are relating with, I understand we have about forty million tax payers in the country we should have more than double of that okay so there should be a lot of effort at uh, bringing a lot of people in and even when you bring them in uh, there is wisdom in using pareto theory 80 20. Uh, we should not tax poverty and uh, i think we have moved towards that but we need to do more the exception of uh, thirty thousand minimum wage from uh, 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 pay uh, personal income tax is commendable, but we need to do more. Uh, when people earn less than uh, $10 per day, uh, $1 per day, as the case may be, are being made to face uh, uh, the tax uh, obligation, it, it speaks to something. Can we concentrate on the uh, 20 people who can give us uh, 80 of our revenue, tax revenue? That speaks to Adam Smith, uh, uh, one of the uh, Adam Smith uh, canons of transition, economies of uh, collection. So you have them, and they are there. They are network uh, individual in the society. So we need to do more of that. And uh, I won't forget the other side of the argument that says uh, the, more, the moment you are able to pay or drop something in the tax uh, uh, basket, you have the you, are, you become a stakeholder, so and your voice can be loud in making a comment, contributing to the society. When the government is not doing what it, it, it ought to do, then you have the you stand on a good moral ground to make a, a contribution. 
So it's a work in progress, and we keep on the advocacy, believing that the government will do more of listening. Thank you very much, Doctor. Thank you, Sama Vice So let's go ahead to um, so many hands up there. Mr. Gabriel Lucchesi, can we take you? Can you? Are you? Um, can we hear you now from your end? Is the audio fine? We're well, sorry, sorry. We still, we still can't hear you. Uh, probably let's hop over to Mr. Kyle De Daniel. Mr. Kyle De Daniel. If you are there, you may unmute to speak. Mr. Kyle De Daniel. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, Mr. Lucius, can you go ahead? I can hear you now. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate our president and yourself. Uh, he has answered two of my questions, but the other thing I want to suggest to our institute is that um, majority of the income that is outside the minimum wage are not being properly captured. And that is to say that um, withholding tax has to be looked upon. At least the objective of that is that at least of me going away with 100% of the amount I received, at least 5% will be retained. And for me to have the effort to come forward and say I want to take a class credit, Mr. Lucesi, where is the evidence of your returns? By that method, uh, they can get a lot of people. At least one, which I will want other state internal revenue services to emulate. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Thank you for the straight to the point and the contribution that government will we need to explore the withholding tax system further to try to get in more people. Um, because for time purposes, uh, we won't be able to take further questions, contributions for now. Um, let's try to wrap mm -hmm. up um, the program. Um, 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 last Mr. President, from you, what do you think, CITN as an institute, is there a synergy we can go into? We have the CBN, we have the NIMC, we have the FRS, we have the JTB, we have the customs. You know, so many, is there a synergy that the institutes can um, go into or drive or do to ensure we upscale tax compliance in Nigeria, given the critical status we are uh, as a country? Uh, thank you. As we round up, there are a lot of things we can do. And we, I think we are doing pretty well with uh, the FRS of this world, the JTB of this world. We are doing pretty well, particularly in the area of uh, training. FRS is uh, uh, doing very well, collaborating with us. And uh, of course, when we also do advocacy, is to ensure that uh, the enlightenment out there is uh, great so that people can understand the reason to pay, what to pay, and who to pay to. So that is ongoing. We also are uh, making uh, steps, taking steps to ensure that we collaborate with other stakeholders. Because at the end of the day, when Nigeria is great, when there is prosperity in the country, we are all uh, beneficiary. Uh, I don't want to run to any uh, Canada. So I want to live, I, I want <laughs> okay. to li I, I want to live in Nigeria. Wow, okay. And if I want to live in Nigeria, Nigeria must be good. So it's in our interest to make Nigeria good. We are collaborating. And that's why, in pa uh, as part of my uh, comment earlier, uh, uh, CBN needs to do more in the area of uh, 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 the cashless economy. That will help uh, the system uh, a lot. Well, thank you, Mr. Bagel. Thank you for um, being with us, for coming for this second um, episode of CIT and Transition on You. To our audience, we thank you for being with us, spending the close to um, one hour. Um, this is the second episode that has come and gone. We'll employ you to look out for the third episode coming up um, you know, in the first Thursday in October, that is Nigeria's 63rd independence anniversary. So it's going to be epic as this. For sponsorship, please, uh, we may want to call 090 80 888815. Once again, 090 80 888815. So we implore members, members of the public, corporate organizations, businesses to take slots in this program. CIT and has over 25,000 membership base and counting over 25,000 membership base and the whole lot of um, consequential network to that base when you advertise share what you have is going to remain on the internet as long as um, life exists and as long as internet exists so call this number 
to get your services, products advertised and share with the world to see. Thank you all for joining us today. See you next time. Thank you very much and bye-bye.